the 31st uh, December revolution is uh, 38 years and the uh, John Dramani Mahama is uh, speaking at the commemoration of the 38th anniversary of the 31st December revolution. Uh, let's go, let's cross over. Our colleague Komla Kluche is there to give us update. Thank you very much. His Excellency, President Jerry John Rawlings, the National Chairman of the NBC, Honorable Samuel Dukuson Popo, General Secretary of our party at Stephen Ketia, Senior Cadres of the Revolution, Party members, citizens of Winneba, let me extend my heartiest congratulations today. Former President of the Republic of Ghana and leader of the revolution. Excellency, Dear Rawlings, and all the cadets, both living and dead, who sacrificed to make the revolution a success. This is a day of remembrance and it's a day of reflection to reflect on the principles that were enshrined in the revolution and how those principles are being upheld in the life of our country today. The 31st December Revolution was a pivotal moment in the history of our nation, and it was touted as the intervention that was going to lead to the end of all coups in Ghana. And indeed, it lived up to expectation because after 31st December, there has been no intervention in the governance of our country up to date. And therefore, we have had a fourth republic that has endured for the last 27 years. And it is the 31st December Revolution that gave birth to the Fourth Republic. Without the 31st December Revolution laying the foundation for the Fourth Republic, we probably would not have a Fourth Republic to talk of today. And the Fourth Republic was established by the promulgation of the 1992 Constitution under the signature and seal of His Excellent, uh, Excellency Flight Lieutenant Jerry Rawlings. The promulgation of this Constitution took place after Justice D.F. Annan of blessed memory, who was the leader of the National Commission for Democracy went around this country and crisscrossed the length and breadth of our nation to solicit the views from our people as to what nature of constitutional governance they would want. At the end of a very exhaustive exercise, they came with a determination that Ghanaians had opted for multi-party democracy. Subsequently, a consultative assembly was set up to draft the 1992 constitution, and there are several of our cadres here, and some of our party executives, Asiye Dunketia, who served in that consultative assembly. And they gave unto the nation the longest lasting constitution we have ever had in our history.
embedded in the 1992 constitution was a phrase. And I remember that that phrase was very hotly debated. There were those who said it must not be included in the constitution. And there were those who were solidly for it to be put captured in the constitution. And those words are probity and accountability. Eventually, probity and accountability won the day. And so if you open the 1992 constitution today, you will see the principles of probity and accountability. And now those principles were meant to remind us of the values of the revolution and to remind us what had necessitated the revolution. And that is why today in the Fourth Republican Constitution promulgated in 1992, we have the words probity and accountability. After the constitution was promulgated, there was a lot of excitement. And people looked forward to the return to constitutional governance. And the expectation was that the return to constitutional governance will speed up the transformation of our economy. And it will lead to more prosperity and improvement of lives for Ghanaians. I dare say that since 1992, there has been some progress in terms of our human development index, in terms of access to health care, in terms of access to electric power, in terms of access to water, in terms of access to transport and other good things of life, education. But I must warn that there is a growing loss of faith in our democratic system. There's a loss of trust in the democratic leadership. The people of our nation are beginning to become despondent and believe that no matter what happens, there can be no significant transformation in their lives. And I believe that people like Justice Annan must be rolling in their graves if they were here today to see some of the things that are going on they will not sleep in peace. This diminished trust in leadership and our democratic system is manifesting one in a sense of apathy. You go around the country and you speak to ordinary Ghanaians and they ask you, what is the reason why I must vote? My vote counts for nothing. I have voted since 1992 and I don't see any significant change in my life. That's the first danger signal. The second danger signal, and that one I call a quid pro quo syndrome, is that he says, okay, I will vote, and I'll give you my political support, but I will auction it to the highest bidder, and I'll give you my support in exchange for material gain. 